The Rock Metal Podcast, episode 58 with Fae Nights. <laughs> All right, Rock Metal Nation, I've got on the line today, Fae Nights, an angular, angelic, alternative rock band from South Sea, UK, and I'm super stoked to have them on. Today, I'm joined by a member of Fae Nights, Chris. Chris, welcome to the show. Hey, John, how's things? Well, spring has bloomed, blooming, blooming <laughs> right now as we speak where I'm at, so it's that sense of renewal in life, not to get too deep here on the Rock Metal Podcast, but it's going well. How are things with you, sir? Fantastic, all, all well over here. Kind of the same really. Spring, spring is springing, uh, both uh, in terms of the climate and also with the band. There's lots of new stuff going on with the band, so it kind of like, feels like a like a fresh season is upon us musically too. So it's all uh, it's all good over here. Perfect, and the band is definitely something we're going to be talking about today. Now, I'm curious, Chris, what inspired you to get into music? Yeah, good question. Um, I think music. I've always thought music sort of finds people rather than rather than me sort of deciding to get into it, it's, I've always thought like music picks picks people that it wants to sort of connect with. So from a very sort of early age, I was I was sort of discovered, music discovered me. Um, and I just remember having a real fascination with piano keys, the colours of the piano keys, the black and white, and the fact that by pressing them, I could make sound and, and I could control the way I felt through those sounds. So... From a real, real early age, that was that was sort of what what brought me to that that place, and um, and that sort of stuck with me ever since. And I can't, you know, sometimes I feel it's a, it's as much of a curse as it is a gift because sometimes you can't really you can't get away from it. So even when you want a bit of peace and quiet, there's just this constant noise in my head. <laughs> um, so I've kind of spent the last sort of 20 years learning how to make that noise work for me and 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 a lot of questions that life throws at me I, I kind of answer those questions through through music whereas uh, you know other people I've noticed can answer them through being academic or being uh, you know physical sporty I for me it's uh, it's always been the creative process that's kind of guided me through through life so I'm pretty sure that's how the other the guys in the band feel as well it's just they, they music pick them and then we found each other. So through the, through through all of that, we've kind of come to a place where we we recognise that in each other, and and that's quite a rare a rare thing, I think. Perfect. Now you mentioned finding each other. What's the story behind how you guys came to be? Okay, cool. Um, we've all we've kind of we live obviously in a, in an area where there's quite a, a strong music scene. So music's never sort of too far away in terms of if you want to go and experience it or if you want to you want to take part um and we've all been in different bands over the years and we've all been aware of each other playing in different bands um and it just so happened that my band two or three years ago at the time uh we kind of broke up and i was sort of looking for something new and it just so happened that each of the members of the fae nights were were in that same position and um we had a mutual respect for each other and we just got I, i phoned the drummer up one day and said you know would you like to come over and jam and and it and it was just such a it was just such an instant um chemistry that it kind of just all sort of it all came together very quickly over like a couple of days we just seemed to seemed to find everyone and it worked and there was no there was no kind of exhaustive rehearsal pro process it was all just real easy and real really fluid so again i think i think the band sort of found us it was you know it was just seemed meant to be now, what inspired the name Fae Nights? Fae Nights is, uh, it cut, when, when, I was, when I was small, my, I used to play fight with my granddad a bit. And if, and if it got too kind of, you know, if we were getting too rough or whatever, he would always, he would always hold his, his hands up and he would, he would put his fingers across, his, his four fingers across one another to make like a, a cross sign. And uh, he would always say this word, Fae Nights, Fae Nights. And I never kind of, when I was young and never sort of knew what that meant, I just I just remember it was him laughing and sort of trying to get us to stop. So it came to me one day in the shower and I was trying to think of a name for this band. I remembered this word suddenly and I looked it up and it actually means 
it's like a cry for respite or truce in, in, in a battle. And I thought that that was really fitting because at the time, this period of sort of looking for band members and trying to find something new felt felt like it was a, a real struggle. And uh, I wanted some relief from that. And when I found the members of the band, it just seemed to be like the answer to, to all the sort of fighting that had been going on in my brain, trying to find who was going to fit and who wasn't. So that word Fainites kind of fitted with that whole, OK, it's time to stop the kind of conflict. Let's we found the right way through. Um, we found each other. Let's let's get on and make some peace. So it kind of fits with that whole theory of of just finding finding the way through all the war and, and making a way through. I prefer things to have meaning. You know, I don't I don't like to to just to just bounce around superficially through what we're doing. Everything has to have a has to have a, a real cemented centre point. Otherwise, it doesn't really mean anything. And I think people listening could maybe pick up on that if it's not real. Yeah. So everything everything we do is is really from the heart. Excellent. Now, when you guys speaking of coming from the heart, when you guys get together to write songs, what's that process like? I think it's kind of typical of, of any band, really. Um, I obviously on the on the sort of the singer singer songwriter primarily. So I'll be I'll be at home most days you know messing around with with the guitar the piano and i'll find something you know something will come through what i'm doing or you know i'll revisit a couple of old ideas or new ideas will come come from those and and i'll find like i'll, I'll create like a blueprint uh, and a rough sort of pattern and i'll take that to the guys and say here's here's the here's the character of the song here's the kind of skeleton let's let's go about giving it some some color and some some muscle and uh, they all come in and, and and add their add their, their their own personality to it and the result is is what you end up hearing is is, is faint nights and it and no song would sound the same without any any of the band members so it's a really really easy and really natural and really successful so far process for us you know we all get to contribute and I get to hear my ideas come back at me from a new point and, and it's refreshing and uh, it doesn't get stale because we're always bouncing ideas around. So it kind of starts with me and ends up with, with the band. And I think that's kind of kind of typical of any sort of comfortable, you know, successful band relationship. Let's go and listen to the first track, Subtractions.
All right, coming back from Subtractions, Chris, my big question for you is what is the story or inspiration behind Subtractions? Okay, so Subtractions is primarily about recognizing that the that you're not necessarily the answer to the to the problem. So sometimes by stepping back um, out, of, out of view and stepping back out of your involvement, you can actually make a, a big difference to to what you're trying to achieve instead of, you know, going at it hammer and nail. So at the time when I was writing that song, I was trying to fix a, a problem that I had with a, with a relationship um, with a, a very close friend of mine. And I realized that I was probably making things a lot worse and a lot more complicated. So by subtracting myself from that from that equation, the whole situation was able to, to breathe and we, I was able to find a way through and uh, and things sort of resolve themselves and and lyrically it's just about recognizing how that person was treating me and how I was treating that person and how sometimes it's it's it, the right answer is to not to not look for an answer it's just to let the answer come naturally um so that's kind of what that song's about yeah makes sense all those times that we think doing more is what needs to happen but actually it's doing less is what's going to yeah make things less happen. is more yeah less is more sometimes <laughs> Let's go and listen to the next track, Gerald D.
right, coming back from Geraldine. And also, as well, there is a music video for this song. So that's going to be posted on the show notes for today, Rock Metal Nation. So if you go to rockmetalpodcast.ca, you can go and see the music video for Geraldine as well. Now, my next question for you is, actually, similar question, Chris. What is the story or inspiration behind Geraldine? Okay, so, I mean, some of your listeners may may recognize the story of Geraldine Large. Um, yeah. She was... Uh, uh, I, think, I believe she was American. I'm not sure if she was Canadian or American, but um, certainly it happened over your side of the Atlantic. Um, this uh, this lady was a sort of a keen explorer and used to do a lot of trails, nature trails and stuff. And it was something I read in the paper over here um, a few months ago. She, she'd gotten lost. She'd gone out exploring on this Appalachian trail with a friend and, and for whatever reason her friend had to sort of head home early and left Geraldine to sort of head to the next meet point on her own. And this, uh, this lady Geraldine, she got lost and essentially never found her way back. Um, and she died. She, I think she survived about 26 days on her own trying to, to get mobile phone signals through to messages through to people, but the phone wasn't, the signal wasn't there. And despite all her best efforts, she, she died in her tent, but she'd written loved ones to all her letters because she knew to, letters to all her loved ones because she knew that she was going to die. So she figured that when they find her body, she wanted to sort of make sure she had said goodbye to, to, to her loved ones properly. So the story goes that they didn't find her for two and a half years. But when they did, she was still in the tent and she was surrounded by all these letters she'd written and her phone and, and all her belongings and everything. And, I, and when I read that story, it just um, it really it made me feel obviously very very sad um but i really connected with that sense of, of loss and confusion that she must have been going through because i figured you know sometimes life can be like that you know despite your best efforts you, you just can't help but get lost and i just uh yeah the story just really really stood out for me and i wanted to in a way kind of have remember her through through a song that's um upbeat and energetic and kind of what I think, you know, she must have been a really cool person to be doing that kind of exploring in the wild and stuff. So I wanted the song to be upbeat and positive and, um, you know, it's just kind of paying a little tribute to her, really. So that's that's the inspiration behind that one. We, we've actually done an acoustic version of that song, um, which is like, it's got a very different feel to it. It's more melancholy. Um, yeah. And you can get that if you if you go to our website, faynights.com. You can subscribe to our mailing list, and in return for your email address, you get a, a download link for the acoustic version of that song. So uh, if, if anyone wants to hear that, that's that's up on on there for grabs. Wow, well, very cool. Now, aside from an acoustic uh, version of Geraldine, what other exciting news does Faynights have coming up for Rock Nation to pay attention to? Cool. So there's um, the main bit of news, other than sort of promoting the EP, which we're going to be mounting a, a tour just after the summer to um, we'll have a second EP coming out around sort of September, October, which we'll be doing a, a sort of tour of the UK. Um, we've also got a, a slot coming up at Victorious Festival in, in England, which is uh, this year. I think you've got headliners like Stereophonics. Um, I think the Manic Street Preachers are playing. So that's quite a big fest- festival in our hometown, and we've, we've been given a slot on that on that stage. So that's real cool. That's at the end of August. Um, but like I say, the main news is that there'll be a, a second EP out September October time, um, which we'll be will be on be on tour with. We've also got a, comp- uh, a label in the states called Gravel Entertainment, who have released our current EP Battle Scars. They've released that over your side. Um, so there may be some some work with them maybe towards the end of the year we may come over to the states to do a few shows but that's kind of that's a work in progress at the moment all right so rock metal nation not only do we have an acoustic version of geraldine so if you dug that track you'll definitely dig the acoustic version of that there's a second ep coming out in september october area with a tour in the uk so if you're listening in in the uk you can definitely check out fey nights live as well as in august coming up is going to be at the victorious festival uh, at that show so definitely some very exciting stuff coming down the pipeline now my next logical question for you chris is how can rock Nation find out more about you guys is there a website that they should go to yep i think that the best one is is the main one we we run which is faynights.com and from there you can you can jump onto our facebook and our twitter uh, soundcloud all that kind of stuff um if you follow us on twitter it's twitter.com forward slash band 
Um, same goes for Facebook forward slash Fainwrights band. But really, we, we try and push Fainwrights.com because it's kind of like a hub for everything. So that's, that shit, that's the place to go. All right. So Rock Metal Nation, you just heard Chris. Go to Fainites.com. You can find everything that you need there, including all the social media links, such as Facebook.com and Twitter.com. If you want to jump there right now because you're already on Facebook or Twitter, each either one will be at Fainites Band. But definitely go ahead and go to Fainites.com where you can get all the information that you need. You can also check out today's show notes by going to the rockmetalpodcast.ca for all the information that you just heard today on this video program. Now, Chris, unless there's anything else you wanted to throw out there, just wanted to thank you for coming on to the show and for sharing your creativity with Rock Metal Nation. Thank you very much for having us, John. We really appreciate what you're doing, so keep it up. Alright, Rock Metal Nation. Hopefully you just found your new favorite band in Fae Nights. Big thanks again for them for coming on and sharing their music with us. Make sure to head over to www.therockmetalpodcast.ca to get all the information on the show you just heard today. And until then, rock on, Rock Metal Nation.